everyone and welcome to today's video lecture in today's video lecture i'll be solving previous year's neat questions and discussing the answers and this is for the chapter animal kingdom and we are in part six of the series so if you haven't checked out part one to five please do so the links will be there in the description box below all right let's begin okay so question number one one of the special characters of cilantrata only is the occurrence of and this appeared in let me change this in the year 1994 okay a polymorphism b flame cells c hermaphroditism and a d nematosis okay so now uh, the question says one of the special character characteristics of cylinderata okay so um polymorphism does exist it occurs in two forms but that's not really a special character okay of cylinderata so that's incorrect flame cells is incorrect Hermaphroditism, uh, no, that's also incorrect because that is also seen. It's not a really special characteristic of cilantrata. But nematosis, yes, that's a special characteristic of cilantrata. So the answer is D. Okay, so a nematosis that we just spoke about. So what you see is a needoblast cell over here, okay, or needocyst. So this whole structure is the needocyst. The nematocyst is the stinging cell that is present inside over here. Okay, so it has a capsule and it has a thread tube. Yeah, it has spines. Okay, and this is a, what a closed uh, nematocyst looks like. Okay, so when it opens, then this whole uh, thing goes up. Okay, over here to catch the prey or whatever it has to do to defend itself. Okay, so cylindrata have nematocysts which are stinging cells present on the needoblast or needocyst like I just showed you. Okay, so what you see outside over here is the needoblast and inside is the nematocyst. So needoblasts are present on the tentacles and body and they assist in anchorage, defense and capture of prey. Okay, so it helps to capture prey, it helps to defend itself and also in anchorage, it has to stay in one place. All right, so these are the this is a very special characteristic of um, cylinderata. Okay, let's move on. I guess we've answered the question though. The answer is D. All right, let's move on. Question number two radial symmetry is usually exhibited in animals which disappeared in 1994. A are attached to the substratum, B have one opening of alimentary canal, C live in water, D have ciliary mode of feeding okay so radial symmetry is usually seen in animals which are attached to the substrate in their sessile okay they remain attached to the bottom okay to the bottom for example starfish starfish can move for feeding but it mostly just remains on the bottom same with hydra okay it most, mostly it stays in one place so the answer is A. I think we discussed this in part uh, the previous part, part 5. So uh, again, since we attach this uh, substratum as a cell, in, that includes animals like sponges, corals and sea animals. Okay, so these sessile animals are mostly radially symmetrical. Okay, so uh, there's a reason why they're radially symmetrical and it's because it helps to react to environmental changes from any direction okay so to be able to catch food and to maintain a stationary position attached to the substratum like i already explained to you so let's say uh, a starfish okay it's radially symmetrical yeah so now any kind of thread that comes from all sides it can uh, defend itself Mo and uh, moreover it can uh, any environmental changes also that are happening on uh, on all the sides it can defend itself this food available from any side it can eat okay that food and it helps to maintain a stationary position on the substratum all right so yep this is it i guess we've answered the question yep let's move on question number three which of the following is an example of platyhelminthes this appeared in 1994 so platyhelminthes as we know are flatworms a plasmodium b is kistosoma uh, c trypanosoma d butcheraria 
okay so uh, schistosoma is an example of platyhelminthus okay so the answer is b so schistosoma is also known as blood fluke it's an example of platyhelminthus plasmodium belongs to the phylum apicomplexa okay and trypanosoma be belongs to the phylum euglenozoa okay which area is a nematode okay so it be belongs to the phylum ascihelminthus all right uh, this was uh, clear it was important to remember the scientific names for these uh, to be able to answer this question let's move on question number four among the following organisms point out a completely non-parasitic form okay so non-parasitic form this appeared in 1994 a tapeworm b mosquito c leech uh, sorry c anemone d leech okay, so non-parasitic form is c uh, c anemone okay so tapeworm mosquito and leech are all parasitic form okay they behave like parasites answer is c okay so c anemone as we know is a non-parasitic form so what you see here so this is a structure of the sea anemone and what it is it's it's placed on this gastropod shell and here inside is a hermit crab now there is a relationship between uh, sea anemone and the hermit crab now what uh, these empty gastropod shells are usually occupied by this hermit crab okay and the sea anemone places itself on top of the gastropod shell so when the crab moves from point a to point b let's say the sea anemone also gets transported from point a to point b now it does now the sea anemone does not behave like a parasite okay it, it's not really gaining anything or lose it's actually gaining anything it is gaining by moving from one place to another but the hermit crab is not gaining or losing anything the hermit crab is moving from a to b right but um in with respect to that uh, movement or that locomotion um sea anemone also gets transported from point a to point b okay so this kind of relationship is called commensalism okay this kind of relationship is called commensalism and this is seen with hermit crab in gastropod shells okay and uh, it's found attached to the shell and moves from one place to another along with the hermit crab that lives inside the shell okay so like i said the sea anemone is obviously gaining an advantage by moving from one place to another but it's not affecting the hermit crab it does not behave like a parasite okay a parasite is when only one uh, part or one partner of the relationship is gaining strength but the other is not but in this kind of relationship uh, sea anemone is obviously gaining an advantage but the hermit crab it doesn't matter to him Okay, I guess we've answered the question though. The non-parasitic form is C. anemone. Right, let's move on. Question number five. Tube feet are the characteristic features or uh, structures of, this appeared in 1994, A. starfish, uh, B. jellyfish, C. crayfish, D. cuttlefish. So, they are the characteristic structures of A. starfish. Okay, starfish have tube feet. Answer is A okay okay yeah sorry something went wrong with my marker okay so what you see here is a diagram of what a tube foot looks like okay so it has an ampulla it has a podium and it has a sucker okay and it is attached to the water canal system or rather it forms a part of the water vascular system not the canal system sorry it forms a part of the water vascular system in echinoderms okay it's seen in it is seen in uh, echinoderms it's also known as ambulacral or water vascular system okay now what it does is this water vascular system allows for water to enter okay into the system so it this structure over here the disc shaped structure is called a madreporite okay water enters through the pores over here and goes into this canal okay and then it enters into this ring canal and from this ring canal it will go into this um, what's called radial canal and then from radial canal it will go into the lateral canal and then like that it has entered the tube feet okay now this helps in locomotion capturing of food and respiration okay the tube feet 
help in locomotion capturing of food and respiration like i said the tube feet have three components ampulla podium and sucker all right so tube feet basically forms a part of the water vascular system in echinoderms all right guess i've answered the question though yeah that characteristic feature of uh, tube it is found in a uh, starfish it's a characteristic structure all right let's move on all right so question number 6 which of the following does not have an open circulatory system okay does not have an open circulatory system this appeared in 1994 a frog tadpole b prawn c kelifer and uh, d cockroach so does not have an open circulatory system is um, a frog tadpole okay does not have an open circulatory system it has a closed circulatory system answer is a So frog tadpole has a closed circulatory system blood flows through closed vessels of varying diameters i hope you know what is the difference between open and closed circulatory system all right so in closed circulatory system uh, obviously uh, like i said over here blood flows through arteries veins and capillaries in open circulatory system we don't have that there are no arteries veins or capillaries okay there's a sinus where the blood flows through into those sinuses Okay, so it's clear. Let's move on. Question number seven, which is common between ostrich, penguin, and kiwi? This appeared in nineteen ninety three. A running birds, B migratory birds, C flightless birds, and D four-toed birds. So, what is common between them is that they are flightless birds. Okay, the answer is C. ostrich penguin and kiwi are flightless birds that means they cannot fly okay flightless birds this is again factual based simple it's more one question number 8 which one assists in locomotion this again appeared in 1993 a trichosis in paramecium uh, b ped pedicellare of starfish and c clitellum in ferritima and d posterior sucker in hirudinaria Okay, which one assists in locomotion? The answer is D, posterior sucker in hirudinaria. All right. Okay, so trichosis and paramecium they are used as defense against prey. Actually, should be defense against predator. Okay. uh pedicellare in starfish are used for defense and removal of unwanted particles from the body so pedicellare in starfish are those snapper like structures on the surface okay the snapper like skeletal structures on the surface and they are used for defense and removal of unwanted particles from the body clitellum in earthworm is a glandular tissue and that produ produces cocoon, uh, cocoon where fertilization and development takes place and posterior sucker in hirudin area helps in locomotion okay the posterior there's an anterior uh, sucker and there's a posterior sucker so posterior sucker helps in uh, locomotion in leeches hirudin area is leech i think i have some diagrams here yeah so what you see here is a pedicellare over here yeah these are those snapper like structures here jaws basilar plate and the stalk okay and over here what you see is a diagram of a leech okay so you have an anterior sucker okay that's next to the mouth and you have a posterior sucker which is close to the anus and this helps in locomotion all right guess i've answered the question though All right. Question number nine. What is true about Tania saginata? This appeared in nineteen ninety three. A life history has pig as intermediate host. No, that's incorrect. There are two large suckers on scolex. No, that's incorrect. Rostella hooks are absent. Yes, that's correct. D. Rostellum has double circle of hooks. No, that's incorrect. 
answer is C. So tenia saginata don't have hooks. Okay, so the interme intermediate host is cattle. Okay, it's also known as beef tapeworm. Okay, so uh, it can uh, it can infect a human, and they're consuming undercooked meat. Okay. They contain four suckers in scolex, rostellum and hooklets are absent. Okay. Uh, yeah, but in the case of tenia solium, they have a rostellum. Okay, and they have hooks also. So there's a difference between the two. In this case, uh, rostellum is absent and hooklets are also absent. All right. Guess I've answered the question. All right, question number 10. Which one of the following animals possess nerve cells but no nerves? It's appeared in 1993. A hydra, B tapeworm, C earthworm, D frogs, tadpole. Now hydra is like the most um, basic animal that we uh, that we see as we go across the phylum, right? Uh, so, but uh, tapeworm, earthworm, frogs, tadpole, they still have a primitive, uh, like for example, tapeworm, earthworm, they do have a primitive nervous system okay and even a uh, frog tadpole which uh, represents a fish okay but the hydra is very basic it has nerve cells but no nerves answer is a so instead it forms a nerve net okay it forms nerve nets in the body now what you see here is a structure of the hydra right so they will have nerve cells here nerve cells here all over their body okay and these nerve cells connect with each other okay and this is what looks like a net okay they connect with each other and this looks like a nerve net all right and they <coughs> sorry they respond to sensory stimulation all right but uh, to answer this question yeah b c and d uh, don't fit into that so what they are asking what is the basic form of a neural system that is seen and that's seen in hydra all right let's move on question number 11 budding is a normal mode of asexual reproduction in and this appeared in 1993 a starfish and hydra b hydra and sponges c tapeworm and hydra d sponge and starfish okay budding is a normal mode of asexual reproduction that is seen in b hydra and sponges okay so the answer is b okay now again uh, this is the same diagram that we saw earlier you see this bud over here forming so it forms a part of that body okay and then this as it grows it detaches from the main body okay from the parent body and forms a new hydra structure yeah. all right and this process goes on this is asexual form of reproduction also uh, sponges also exhibit budding as a way of asexual mode of reproduction all right so that uh, fits the answer yep starfish and tapeworm don't show that but uh, yeah let's move on question number 12 trachea of cockroach and mammal are similar in having this appeared in 1993 a paired nature b non-collapsible walls c ciliated inner lining d origin from head okay so they're similar in b non-collapsible walls okay answer is b okay so in uh, mammal trachea i'm sure uh, you've studied the human respiratory system there is hyaline cartilage present right in humans okay so they are c-shaped over here the c-shaped hyaline cartilage uh, cartilage present in the trachea and that prevents it from collapsing all right so that is um, what and mammal what happens in mammals in the case of cockroach what you see is the structure of the trachea here now trachea here is divided into two parts there is a syncytial epithelium outside some multinucleated epithelium outside and inside there are cuticular thickenings okay cuticular thickenings over here and this is called tenidia or intima 
okay now this teeny dab prevents the trachea from collapsing okay so this plays a role in preventing the trachea from collapsing so in both cases in mammals also and in cockroaches you see that what is common is it uh, that there are structures present in the trachea that prevent it from collapsing all right uh, the paired nature ciliated inner lining origin from head no that uh, does not fit that criteria it's the, so the answer is b okay let's move on question number 13 a larval stage occurs in the life history of all members of the group this appeared in 1993 a frog lizard and cockroach b ascaris housefly and frog uh, c housefly earthworm and mosquitoes d butterfly frog and mosquito okay so larval stage occurs in the life history of all members in the group is d uh, butterfly frog and mosquito okay so the answer is d uh, yeah, so they all have larval stages. They undergo indirect development. Now, you notice I did not mention Ascaris. Also, Ascaris has a larval form. But that larval form is um, not different from the adult form. So, basically what they are saying over here is that butterfly, frog and mosquito, their larval form is completely different from what their adult form looks like. So, they have an egg. Okay. Then they have the larval stage. Right. And then they have the adult stage or the pupa stage also comes in between okay but all these four stages look completely different okay but in the case of ascaris the larval this is a very important point to remember the larval stage is similar to the adult form okay so it does not undergo metamorphosis okay so this is indirect development over here that you see in butterfly frog and mosquitoes indirect development okay so every stage undergoes a metamorphosis every stage looks different from the other okay that is why it is butterfly frog and mosquito so the larva or butterfly is caterpillar now you see the caterpillar is different from what the adult butterfly looks like the final form that we see uh regular in the case of mosquito is different from what a mosquito looks like uh, tadpole uh, is different is completely different from what a frog looks like so tadpole undergoes metamorphosis regular undergoes meta metamorphosis to form mosquito similarly the case of butterfly caterpillar and butterfly all right so that is why butterfly frog and mosquito are the right answers okay yep earth one does not uh, undergo any larval stage cockroach also they have nymph so nymph also like i said in ascaris nymph also looks similar to what the adult cockroach looks like okay so they don't undergo complete metamorphosis okay lizard also same thing so yeah all those uh, other options don't fit the question all right let's move on question number 14 gorilla chimpanzee mon monkeys and humans belong to the same in 1993 a species uh, b genus c family and d order okay so all four gorilla chimpanzee monkeys and humans belong to the same order okay so the option is d the correct option they belong to the order primates okay please remember this gorilla chimpanzee monkey and humans all belong to the order primates all right let's move on then Question number 15. What is common in whale, bat and rat? This appeared in 1993. A. Absence of neck. B. Muscular diaphragm between thorax and abdomen. C. Extra abdominal testes to avoid high temperature of body. D. Presence of external ears. Okay, so whale, bat and rat, uh, rat like we all know are mammals, right? Uh, they all do have a neck, so that's incorrect. Muscular diaphragm between uh, thorax and abdomen. Yes, that's correct. Because uh, diaphragm is a very important um, structure that is seen in mammals, specifically in mammals. Extra abdominal testes to avoid high temperature, no, that's incorrect. Because whales don't have that. And presence of external layers, again, whales don't have that. So the answer is B. Okay. So like I said previously in my previous lectures also, the presence of diaphragm is unique to mammals and is an evolutionary trait that differs mammals from other classes. Okay, Whales do not have extra abdominal testes and external ears. So this um, 
is the common between all three okay let's move on okay question number 16 aristotle's lantern occurs in class and this appeared in 1992 a echinodia uh, b astroidia c holothuroidia sorry uh, d of your sorry <laughs> they're very long names very complicated but anyway we have to answer a question uh, aristotle's lantern occurs in class echinoidea okay so the answer is a they all uh, fall in the category of echinoderms uh yep so aristotle's lantern as you can see it was um discovered by as oh he's the one who described it aristotle was a big philosopher scientist okay a greek uh, philosopher and he um called and eventually he's the one who described it eventually it was called aristotle's lantern it's a structure that is found in class echinoidea that belong to the phylum echinodermata for example sea urchins or different types of sea urchins fall under this class okay and the structure that you see here is a structure of what a sea urchin looks like so what he said is what did aristotle say that this structure over here reminded him of what a lantern looks like okay a ship lantern looks like this is what he felt all right and it's actually a mouth and feeding apparatus and it has five sharp teeth in between and uh, so yeah since he described it we eventually called it aristotle's lantern and uh, but basically this is what he was describing and it is found in sea urchins all right and sea urchins fall in the class of echinoidea that's all that's all that is there is to it um yep basically yeah uh, you just had to know that aristotle's lantern is a structure that is seen in sea urchins and sea urchins belong to the class echinoidea okay right let's move on question number 17 starfish belongs to and this appeared in 1992 a asteroidia b of your pheroidia c holothuroidia and d crinoidia okay starfish belongs to a asteroidia okay answer is a all right so here i have uh, noted down the examples okay starfish belongs to the class asteroidia like we all know now i have also written examples of the other classes that are there if you want you can note this down uh, for pheroidia olothuroidia and crinoidia all right so if you want you can note this down but the question was pretty direct they spoke about starfish right uh, so yep yeah, starfish belongs to the class asteroidia all right let's move on okay so question number 18 eye of the molluscan group that resembles vertebrate eyes this appeared in 1992 a bivalvia b gastropoda uh, c pelycycopoda and d cephalopoda okay so the eye of the molluscan group that somewhat resembles the vertebrate eye and that is seen in d cephalopoda okay answer is d so cephalopoda they contain animals such as octopus okay so uh, that is similar to the vertebrate eye okay so they have a retina they have nerve fibers and they have an iris okay so it is somewhat similar to what the vertebrate eye looks like it's not exactly the same but it is similar okay so just remember this as a fact that the cephalopoda eye is similar to the vertebrate eye okay all right let's move on Question number 19. Adult Culix and Anopheles can be distinguished with the help of this appeared in 1992. A. Mouth or parts or color. B. Sitting posture. C. Antennae or wings. D. Feeding habits. Okay, so they can be distinguished with the help of B. Sitting posture. Answer is B. So here I made a table the differences between Culix and Anopheles mosquito. Alright, so adults lie parallel to the surface in the case of Culix and adults lie at an angle of 45 degrees to the surface. Although, uh, also wings have a difference. So Culix have, uh, don't have dark spots, sorry. And wings have dark spots in the case of Anopheles. But their antennae are the same. 
okay so male both anophilus and culus uh, sorry i should have written that in italics uh, they both the male mosquitoes both have similar antennae and the female mosquitoes both have similar antennae mm -hmm. so there's a difference between what the male and the female antennae looks like okay so uh, for example uh, male mosquitoes have bushy antennae and adult female it is simple antennae all right so that is the difference between culix and anophilus so that is why uh, option c is incorrect option c is incorrect but b is the right answer although the wings are different the antennae is the same all right let's move on okay question number 20 sandbox of birds is called this again in 1992 a Pigostyle, uh, B. Larynx, C. Syrinx, Syrinx sorry, and uh, D. Syncrum, sorry. Uh, sound of birds is called, sound box of birds is called C. Syrinx, okay, answer is C. So, birds have a special um, sound box, okay, it's called Syrinx, okay. here that you can see over here, this part is called the Syrinx. Uh, Pico style is actually formed by the fusion of the caudal vertebrae. I'm just giving it to you for um, as a definition for information. But uh, to answer your question, it is syrinx. If you go back, yep, the others uh, don't fit that answer. The question. All right, let's move on. All right, so question number twenty-one. Ascaris lava is called, and this appeared in nineteen ninety-two. A. Cysticercus, um, B. Raptitiform, C. Hexaganth, and D. Oncosphere. Okay, so Asteris lava is called Raptidiform. Okay, answer is B. Yeah, so I've already discussed the, the life cycle of Asteris, right? So uh, if you want, you can watch my previous part. So I don't want to go through it all over again, but uh, like I said, Raptidiform is the lava that is seen in Asteris all right all right this was pretty direct easy all right so question number 22 what is correct about tinian this appeared in 1992 a male organs occur in posterior proglottides and uh, b male organs occur in anterior proglottides and uh, c female organs occur in anterior proglottides uh, d mature proglottides contain both male and female organs okay so it is d male uh, proglot uh, sorry mature proglottides uh, contain both male and female organs in the case of tania okay so we need to understand that the tania structure is divided into three parts it's called legs then there's a neck and then there is uh, these proglottides or segments okay proglottids or proglottides whatever way you say it so there are three types that are seen is an immature mature and gravid okay so the immature contain indifferentiated male and female organs the mature proglottides are what that contain uh, are the ones that contain two full sets of male and female organs okay and they are also larger in size the gravid proglottides are further away from the scolex and they are occupied by the uterus filled with eggs okay so it is the mature proglottids that contain uh, male and female organs okay all right yes i've answered this question though a b and c are incorrect okay all right so we've come to the end of this video lecture and i hope you've enjoyed today's video lecture and i hope you've learned something new today and don't forget to like share and subscribe to mg need biology and i'm available on facebook twitter and instagram so you can follow me there for more updates and i'll see you in the next video lecture all right bye